Look at the state of this old Predator tank. Snapped exhausts, half a dozen layers of paint and, to add insult to injury, someone has burnt it with fire. For certain, it seems like its best days are behind it. Or are they? I'm up for the challenge of restoring this Predator to its deserved glory. Will you join me on this journey? When I was 11, all I wanted for Christmas was Warhammer 40k stuff. Thanks to my school friends, I had caught the bug. There was little else on my list to Father Christmas that year. Amongst other box sets I received, I got the Predator kit, which, unbeknownst to me, would soon fall out of production being replaced by two hybrid metal and plastic kits in 1996. The model that had entered my possession was in this box with the studio model bearing the Blood Angel scheme and iconography, though it hadn't always had that box. Some years earlier, it was released with this box instead during 40K's first edition. Anyway, I built the model, and my dad helped me spray paint it with a rattle can of Blood Angel's red. All that was needed was to add some details with black, yellow and silver, and it was good to go. It stayed in my collection for many years, and I have this one photo left of it. So, fast forward to 2023, and I'm a sad adult wanting to rediscover what was lost from my childhood collection. I've already managed a large chunk of ultramarines, and scored a few tracked vehicles to accompany them. But the Predator has always been high on my list of models to reclaim. And so, thanks to eBay, I was able to acquire this model. And man, has it suffered. Let's start with the paint job, or as I later discovered, paint jobs, plural. But I'm getting ahead of myself. The thickness of this paint obscures many details, notably these textured surfaces. Someone clearly wanted it to be blood angels, but either they emptied the entire pot of blood red on here, or this is one of several chapters this tank has served. What the paint doesn't cover is some of the battle damage this poor machine has received. Now I'm all for battle damage if it adds to the aesthetic of the model, but someone has crossed a red line here. Clearly, it was the right sponson that took the brunt of the blowtorch treatment, the flames having penetrated the circular hatch. There was a second last cannon, but this has been twisted out of shape, and I'm not sure if I can use it for anything else. Flames also licked the front of the panel, the rear access hatch, which was warped slightly, and the turret. Speaking of the turret, I wasn't sure if it was the paint or the glue, but it was stuck fast. <sighs> That's another problem to solve. At least the last cannon in the left sponson rotated, but I reckon the mechanism wouldn't survive the stripping process. I had had this model in my possession for a few weeks before I summoned up the courage to strip the paint. I knew this was going to be a steep hill to climb, but a necessary one if any progress was to be made. Several rounds of biostrip was enough to cut through the thick layers of paint, and I should add, layers of varying colour. It seems this Predator has been Ultramarines and Imperial Fist at some point. After a few strenuous stripping sessions, I'm left with these parts. Though everything is left this sickly shade of red, not that it matters, since it's very thin, and no details are obscured anymore. It won't be visible after priming, but it made me wonder about the persistence of red post paint stripping. Maybe it's warp tainted or something, or mixed with the blood of sacrificed virgins. Which reminds me, I felt compelled to keep this squidgy paint residue and film it for you guys to enjoy. Thank me later. I'm pleased to say that the turret was freed from its bondage easier than expected, though the rod which allowed it to turn is snapped. And I do want it to swivel. So, my solution was to drill the underside of the turret and into the top of the hull. The replacement rod was some steel wire held in place with superglue, bicarb and some milliput to be on the safe side. I also placed a wee bit of milliput in the new hole in the body of the Predator so the rod fit nice and snug. There, buttery smooth swivelling. Now, on to replacing the melted components. One option I considered was cutting some plastic card for the job but I raided my bits box first and found this replacement panel for the front. I guess it pays to hoard bits as I do. As for the sponson, perhaps I need to do some remodeling with putty. Nope, 
I've got a spare one for that too. But for the track, I suppose I would have to pull out something creative to patch the holes. Or I could just use this spare as well. Am I cheating? Hmm, maybe. But I knew I had these parts before I bought the thing, and why kill yourself with crafting pieces when you have perfectly usable spares? That's my reasoning anyway. Now with the sponson mechanism broken, I had to find a way for the last cannons to turn. I settled on using magnets, and got to work drilling and filing these as necessary. And as for the broken exhausts, I replaced these with steel wire that was just about the same thickness. I trimmed them with my wire cutters, leaving a few millimetres extra length so they could be inserted nicely into the hole I had drilled on top of the exhausts. Again, superglue and bicarb was the fixer for these two. And with these fixed, I glued them onto the tracks, try my damnedest to keep them in line with each other. You'll notice the spare track is grey plastic, but the original is cream coloured. It's interesting to see how GW has changed their colours of plastic over time. If anyone knows when they moved from cream to grey, then do let me know in the comments. With the tracks done, it was time to glue them to the body. I used polystyrene cement to give me time to reposition them if needed. Then. I rubber banded the whole thing until a strong bond had formed. While this set, I attached a new panel where the old one had been. Nice, clean, and free from the effect of melter weapons. Again, using poly cement, I fixed the dozer blade, save one missing spike, which I left as is. As I said earlier, some battle damage is allowed in this build. I noticed both the original builders of both the tracks had stuck the headlights on upside down. This bothered me, so I cut them off with my craft knife and reattached them. This took a few goes since lining them up was tricky. Turning my attention to the turret once more, I glued on the original barrel. I haven't shown this up to now since it had eluded me at the bottom of the biostrip tub. Actually, I had to take this off and reattach it later since it did look a bit wonky the first time. The turret has lost the original grab handle, which is understandable given how frail they were, though the plastic stumps were still there on this model. Rather than search for others in my bits box, I took the advice of an Instagram buddy, bending and trimming some paper clips until they were the right shape and length. Before I glued them in place, I drilled some holes into the plastic stumps so they better held the new metal parts. Superglue and bicarb did me another solid here, and filled in the gaps to boot. A few people who have been following this project on Instagram said I should have had a go at the full-on handrails that grace the sides of the old Rhino variant. My Lamenters Rhino has these, if you're unsure what I mean, but I declined the challenge this time, I just didn't have it in me and I was itching to paint the thing. But before we go on to the painting, let me show you my existing predators. A few years ago I rescued this plastic predator off eBay. This is the most recent kit, although I say recent, it's been out for some years now. Many years in fact. I think this model actually featured in the Dawn of War video game, and I was playing that a few years ago when I decided I really wanted one. So I rescued this off eBay, painted it up Blood Angels in the orange scheme that I done for my most recent Blood Angels army, and then I added some hazard stripes, magnetized the sponsons, although they're a bit wobbly still, and then I painted this strange grey and blue checker pattern on the back. I don't know, I saw a retro paint scheme somewhere and I felt like I wanted to copy it in this way, and the checks would be a really good idea for this project. Anyway, I really love this tank, it looks amazing. The other Predator I've got, well, you'll have seen that if you've watched my video about my Lamenters army. It's the 1996 metal plastic hybrid Predator. The Predator Destructor, actually, the one with the auto cannon, and I think the kit came with heavy bolters uh, or last cannons. This one's got the last cannons and checks and hearts to boot. Now onto the painting. If you've seen my Land Raider and Whirlwind video, a lot of the techniques that I used on there I'm going to be using again. So the first step was to spray the whole thing Republic Blue by Colourforge. 
I have this on many vehicles and it's an excellent base colour for my ultramarines. The spray did not quite enter each gap and crevice so I brushed some macrag blue into these parts. A good start methinks. See? The paint is thin enough so the turret can swivel. Still buttery smooth. With the model all more or less the same shade of blue, I began the process of lightening the overall blue colour. I did this by mixing Macrag Blue with Calador Sky on my wet palette, applying it to all the flat surfaces, being careful to ignore the creases and recesses. The point of this is to leave the darker colour untouched to provide shading. Now you may have noticed the last cannons are missing. I kept these separate and sprayed them sanguine red by Colourforge. I felt part assembly was important here, to not spoil the red with the blue and the blue with the red, but just to demonstrate, since I magnetised them early, reattaching them is really quite easy. Back to painting the blue, I used Calador Sky again and mixed it with Lothan Blue on my wet palette, then with the edge of my brush and using only a small volume of paint each time, I edge highlighted all the blue armour. And there were many edges, let me tell you. Highlighting the curved panels was a bit more challenging, but I decided on a few small strokes of the same highlighting mix where the light caught the apex of the curve. And this was what the model looked like after the first pass of highlighting. With the blue mixture still on my wet palette, I added some white to create my second highlight colour. Again, this was applied carefully to edges of the models, not covering necessarily as much as before in order to provide a slight gradient. To that end, these highlights are sharper than the first, allowing the darker colour to show through. I wouldn't say I'm an expert at edge highlighting, but I have found that not over thinning the paint is as important as having the smallest amount of my brush with each pass. There isn't really a quick win here though, just patience and steady hands. When it came to highlighting the curved parts a second time, I repeated the thin stroke pattern from before, but covered less area with the lighter colour. And this is how it looks after the second highlight. But we're not done just yet. To maximise the popping potential, I took some pure white and dotted it on the sharpest points of the model. It's a very satisfying step, especially after the war of attrition that is two passes of edge highlighting. For the headlights, I first thinned down some white paint and applied them to the recesses. I had planned for the next coat to be yellow, but I felt a white coat was needed first since yellow over blue takes several coats to actually look yellow rather than green. But with the main body of the model done, it was time to turn my attention to the other colours. I planned for the auto cannon muzzle and smoke launchers to be red, so I painted these white first in order to increase the vibrancy of that colour. However, before I completed this stage, I decided to go back to Lotham Blue and paint on some thin lines in various places on the body, to simulate scratches to the paintwork. This reminds me of my youth, when my dad would get very upset over the slightest scratch on his car, particularly his green rover. And here's me painting on scratches. How the turns have tabled, Dad. I mean, tables have turned. I forgot to mention before that I used some of that steel cable to replace a missing smoke launcher pipe. You can tell up close that it's steel and not plastic, but I think from this distance, and especially painted, it looks pretty good. The last cannons were already painted red, but I wanted some shading, so I painted Reichland flesh shade into the recesses. Having them magnetised means I could stick them to this hobby tool for the duration of the painting. I've had this particular tool since about the year 2000, which a savvy GW manager convinced me to buy when I was venturing into using green stuff. While the white was still a bit damp, I began painting the autocannon barrel black, and then giving this same treatment to the other parts that would later be metallic. This includes these mesh panels at the front and back of each track, and also the exhausts, the grab handles, and the stowage boxes. The gash of battle damage on the turret also was shaded with some thin black paint. When the shade on the last cannons was dry, 
I added some black paint there as well, and also to the lumpy parts just behind the barrel. I, I can't call them lumpy parts, can I? Hang on. Google Las Cannon Anatomy. Las Cannon Anatomy. Hmm. Elizotronic Warfare on DeviantArt says it is a solid copper cooling jacket to prevent catastrophic barrel failure during prolonged fire. In lieu of any cannon info, no pun intended, I'm going with this. Anyway, I couldn't paint everywhere black before, so I returned to this colour for the tracks. I paid most attention to the sides, since these will actually be visible once the paint job is done. Now, because I'm nothing if not inconsistent, I decided to crack out the Vallejo burnt cadmium red for the hatches behind the sponson mounts. I'm honestly not sure why I didn't paint these white first, but sometimes I'm just carried along by the spirit, you know? I suppose I wanted a dark red before I went in with the brighter reds. The dozer blade also got the same cadmium red treatment. I cracked out the bar red contrast paint for the smoke launchers and the autocannon muzzle. It had great vibrancy for a red paint, just the thing for super saturated second edition. Onto the main colour for the dozer blade, and the side hatches for which I used Mephiston Red. I tried Bar Red off camera, but it didn't make a huge difference on top of the Cadmium Red, so conventional acrylic it was. And this is what it looked like after the red colours were blocked in. Time for the metallics. I have been using this bottle of Army Painter Gun Metal for many years now, and it seems to be never-ending. It shall be a day of much lamenting when it runs out, since I'm convinced the newer army painter recipe isn't as smooth as the old one. Anyway, I began applying this and all the parts I painted black beforehand, save the autocannon. Of course, I left some parts with the black showing, in lieu of shading with washes. I feel it gives a crisper finish. Of course, it meant lining the rims of the wheels and dotting the rivets. Anyone else like dotting rivets? Here's the battle damage on the turret getting a line of gun metal, showing the original metal colour of the armour where a hit has been sustained. And the copper cooling jacket to prevent catastrophic barrel failure getting a coat of gun metal. Sorry DeviantArt user, I discovered today I don't want to paint it copper. I decided to add some grey to the black barrel of the autocannon, or predator cannon if this was Horus Heresy. A makeup brush was my dry brush of choice, however I chose to paint over it later with a darker grey since this came out lighter than I wanted it. The stowage boxes also got a dry brush of this grey and then a bit of edge highlighting with Fenrisian grey. The next job was to highlight the reds. Before I mention that, let me focus in on this random chevron pattern at the rear of the tank. I'm not sure why it's there to be honest, but I painted it black then gunmetal, nothing fancy. The first round of highlighting on the red was done with Troll Slayer Orange. The smoke launchers, dozer blades and las cannons were liberally highlighted with this orange colour, with relatively thick lines at this stage. Since my second and third edition days painting red for my Blood Angels, I have questioned how to highlight red. For many colours, you can make a highlight shade by mixing the base colour with white, but for red, this gives pink, which isn't a problem but could be depending on what you're going for. So does that make orange better? The issue with orange is that it sometimes doesn't pop enough. So the solution I arrived at was this one. I mixed a little of the Troll Slayer orange I was using with a lot of this flesh color, which is nothing special, just barbarian flesh from Army Painter. Then I used this to edge highlight all the extreme edges of the red parts of my model. This includes the tips of the smoke launchers, the edges of the autocannon muzzle, the fins on the last cannons along with the load more edges I'm not going to attempt to name, and finally the dozer blade prongs. I've read in places that mixing the orange with a bone colour is the way to go for those extreme red highlights, but I found it looked flesh coloured anyway so I thought, well, why not just use my flesh colour then? And I believe it's now decal time. Citadel Art Coat goes on for a smooth finish for the decal to adhere to. When these are dry, it's another coat of Art Coat, followed by matte medium to tame the shine. If the surface is not flat, I use Microsol to allow the decal to conform to the surface better. 
Time for some finishing touches. Yellow for the headlights and spots of black for the ends of the smoke launchers. And for the last cannons, I could have drilled them, but a wee spot of black on the end will do. Here's the girl in all her glory. Getting there, but one more finishing touch. A bright silver on the uppermost metal areas. A subtle colour which doesn't show so well on camera, but I can see it, which is the most important thing. Now, I could call this project done, but having magnetised the Predator, it would be a waste not to add in one last thing. Predator tanks can also have heavy bolters as sponsored weapons, and I like to have this option open. There was no optional loadout from the original box, so I took these heavy bolters which I had spare from the Horus Heresy Contempted Dreadnought kit and modified them such they would fit into the sponsons. Then I added magnets, sprayed them red, and gave them a similar paint job to the last cannons. I'm pleased with how they turned out, and I particularly like the drum magazine of this sculpt. It's been a hell of a journey, from this poor neglected soul to this glorious beast, with a whole new lease of life. It's been a labour of love, and a chance to practice some less comfortable modelling techniques. Sure, there are some imperfections, warping on the back panel for instance, and one dozer blade missing, but aren't such blemishes like the scars we carry with us? A reminder of the journey we have endured to come from there to here. And it makes it a unique miniature. My miniature. And I wouldn't have it any other way. So here's to the Predator. The Battle Tank Predator. Two, three, four. Battle Tank Predator. Armor of the Space Marines. Battle Tank Predator Blow you all to smithereens The first known Predator Was known as the Destructor A turret autocannon And heavy bolter sponsons A rhino chassis variant With no transport complement Battle Tank Predator Armor of the Space Marines, Battle Tank Predator, Blow you all to smithereens, The second kind of Predator, Predator Annihilator, Twin and Glass Cannon, And two more in the sponsons, An anti-tank solution, is the logical conclusion Battle Tank Predator Armor busting laser beams Battle Tank Predator In a pinch it intervenes Oh! Battle Tank Predator Armor of the Space Marines Battle Tank Predator Blow you all to smithereens Smithereens! Smithereens! And with that, I'd better go paint some more minis. Take care, and thanks for watching.